Hello and welcome everyone to my final major project presentation titled Environmental Data Analysis and Machine Learning Enhancement rendered by a CNN Speech Reactive Custom Watch. Smart watches have been on the market since the year 2000 with the release of the IBM Watchpad and they became even more popular since 2014 and 2015 with the release of the Google Wear OS and the Android uh, Apple smartwatch in 2015. However, they predicted that the sales will reach approximately 200 million by the year 2019. However, from the histogram, we can see that in the year 2021, we have under 150 million. Now, why is that? Well, in my opinion, it is because people are actually more interested in activity tracking and actual medical information than having a watch that works more as a remote of the current smartphone. So everything that a smartphone can do, it does better compared to the watch. So my project, consists in having a watch that can be used on a day-to-day -day in special environmental activities as a medical device in order to see how the world around us affects our health and how our health stands and the technology can be adapted to be used by emergency workers or even for the space industry. So because of this I have divided my project into four main goals. Firstly to have a modern distinct jewelry look which is able to have accurate environmental data analysis with machine learning enhancement for weather forecasting and all of this is done thanks to these two main modules which are the Nikla Sense and the NanoSense. These two offer a huge array of sensors as well as embedded machine learning capabilities. So the functions here are divided into environmental and medical and these are all the functions available at the moment besides pain, clock and compass and all of this is done because of the relations that weather have, different aspects of weather have. So with the right physics formulas, like these ones here, we can have a lot of extra outputs compared to the actual sensors that we have on board. So we need to make sure that the actual values that we give to those formulas are correct. Therefore, I am using a low pass filter in the form of an exponentially weighted moving average. I've also tried a double exponentially moving average and a regular exponentially moving average, but the exponentially weighted moving one is the best. And you can see the way I change the alpha value of the uh, filter, it also changes how much the values are smoothed out and it helps with the elimination of outliers. Now, the values still need to be correct and accurate. So I have compared the values from my own board in order to understand the difference between the sensors on board and actual commercial 99% accuracy sensors and actual weather stations. And you can see here at the bottom that in regards to the temperature, for example, and the humidity, there's quite actually a high percentage of the mean absolute deviation error. So in order to correct that, I used something called linear statistical regression, which plots the incorrect values on the x-axis and the correct values on the y-axis and it tries to understand the linearity between all the different data points. And because of that, I can get a best fit line, a best fit equation, where I can put my x of the incorrect value and get the accurate value. This, re this resulted in an accuracy of up to 1% within the uh, actual accurate value. The same was applied to the nano, and I got the same accuracy, although it was between 1% to 2%. Now, Taking all these values and applying them to the um, weather classification, I can use machine learning with, in order to identify it within five different types. So I can identify the weather as fair, rain, cloudy, overcast, or snowy. And the way it works is that machine learning compared to traditional programming is different because it doesn't use explicit instruction that have been programmed, but rather it learns from the data that has been presented, and then it outputs the actual program. So in my case, I have used a data set of 20 years with daily averages of five features, which are temperature, dew point, feels like temperature, humidity, and pressure. And here I can see the actual distribution of my samples per actual weather condition. Now, it is more common in real life to have rain compared to snow. However, a machine learning estimator is made with the idea in mind that all the samples are distributed equally. In order to solve that, I'm using two different oversampling methods called the slaughter and Alessine. Both of them create um, synthetic samples by using the k-nearest neighbors. 
And then all these samples, if we plot them here, we can see the difference between the regular. So for example, in orange, I have the snow, and we can see the very little samples that I have. And then here, once it has been oversampled, we can see how it reaches the amount of points that every other class has. Once I put all these data points into five different machine learning models with the original and the oversampled data, I can then get precision per class. And it turns out that an XG boost classifier with Bayesian optimization and grid search optimization of the hyperparameters, which means that the classifier is able to more um, specifically understand the patterns of the data. I reach 89% accuracy for rain, 73% accuracy for fair, 38 for cloudy, 2.5 for forecast, and 100% for snow. But the machine learning doesn't stop here. As I can move from a classification problem to a regressive problem, and then I can actually predict the amount of rainfall in the future based on my 20 years. So by taking the exact same data as before, but now plotted in 2D, the best regressive system that I could use for this was a decision tree which creates its own rule set in order to understand exactly how much precipitation there will be. And if I compare this with the actual two years from 2020 to 2021, we can see how in black I have the actual true values and then in white the values that have been predicted, which are quite accurate, and in fact, they are within 10% R-squared error, which represents the distance between the true value and the predicted value, and a mean absolute deviation error of only 9%. Now, to switch things up a bit, I've talked about my watch being able to recognize voice commands. So in order to do speech recognition, what I'm doing is I'm taking 50 samples per voice command, so for the weather classification, that would be, how is it going to be today? and I'm taking 50 samples with different intonations and from different distances. I'm removing all the extra noise and only keeping the keyword itself. And then I'm giving all this to a melt frequency exceptional coefficient processing block, which is able to find all the features of my actual voice pattern into this voice command. And then all of these features, 900, are here plotted, can show us actual the differences for all the different commands. So, for example, altitude in orange is here on the edge and can be easily identifiable and classifiable. However, a lot of them are actually here in the middle bundled together. So that would make it difficult for a machine learning model to classify as it would need to learn a lot of information about the patterns. So instead of that, I'm using a neural network. And neural networks are more advanced because of their architecture and thanks to the neurons available, I can actually learn very, very little details about every single sample. So, in my case, I have my input layer of 900 features, three convolution layers that are one-dimensional of uh, 1632 and 64 neurons each, a pooling rate of 0 0.25, and through 500 epochs of training and 0 0.03 learning rate, I'm able to reach 97% accuracy in detecting my voice. And now that I've talked about my work that has been completed, let's talk about the future work. Firstly, I need to optimize the voice recognition to be even better and to fully fledge out the voice assistant. Then I need to combine all the work as at the moment everything is modular. And then I need to miniaturize the breakout PCB, create a shell to put everything together and have a questionnaire with different people in order to understand which sensors should be improved, removed or added. With all this said, I'd like to thank you for the time dedicated.